What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.1 beta 1 to register developers and soon to public beta testers just one day after the big release of iOS 15. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.1 beta 1, tvOS 15.1 beta 1, watchOS 8.1 beta 1, and macOS Monterey beta 7. But of course in this video, we are talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what new in the software so let's go ahead and start off with the size so you can see here the size came in at 5.43 gigabytes for me on my iphone 12 pro max which was still running the rc build so if you were on the rc build it's going to be around the size and even if you were not if you were on ios 15 the official version and then you downloaded the profile for the ios 15 betas after you should still see a pretty large size it may actually end up being around the same size regardless of the version you're coming from but anyways let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update if we go into our settings and then go to general about 15.1 you can see here the build number is 19B5042H. So we do have an H at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we have quite a few betas to go. I would predict maybe four or five betas here in 15.1, but we'll see. And then if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see we have an update there as well to 2.10. 0, 0.00 so you could see some fixes to connectivity issues related to the modem if you had those on ios 15.0 all right so now what's new here in ios 15.1 beta 1 and the first thing is that share play is back in facetime so this is one of the most hyped features in ios 15 and of course it got removed about midway through the ios 15 beta cycle but it is back here in iOS 15.1. And if we go into our settings and then go down to the FaceTime section right here, and then down, you will see SharePlay is right here. If you tap on that, you have the toggle for SharePlay. Then you also have the section for SharePlay automatically. So when you go into one of these applications, it will SharePlay that media automatically. We also get a new pop-up when you go into SharePlay and you want to play music or if you want to play a TV show or movie, whatever application you're in, we have a new pop-up up top. So it looks a lot cleaner than it did on iOS 15 when it was first being beta tested. So this looks a lot better. And also the verbiage has changed. It says choose content to use SharePlay. Whereas before it just said that basically like media would automatically start playing or something like that. So that's a lot better, a lot easier to understand and just the overall look is a lot better. And then we also have a new icon for announce calls. So you can see there we have a new icon in 15.1 versus iOS 15 over here on the left. Now, another really big change in iOS 15.1 is that users are going to be able to add their COVID vaccination cards to the wallet application. So now when you double press your side button, you will be able to see your vaccine card down here with your credit card and everything else, which is huge. And these vaccine cards are going to be verified through the smart health cards specification. So you're not gonna be able to enter like fake vaccine cards or anything like that. So this is going to be very nice and you you will be able to use this at businesses, venues, restaurants, anywhere that's going to require that COVID vaccine proof. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering about the digital driver's license as well. And we have not heard anything about that here with iOS 15.1. So I'm assuming that's going to be coming later this year or possibly even next year. So nothing on that just yet, but I will let you guys know when we hear anything new. Another change I noticed is inside of the weather application. So if we go into our weather and then go down to the precipitation map right here, you will see that all of the overlays are now in a lighter mode. So before on iOS 15.0, if we go to that same map right here, you will see that it kind of has like this dark mode on it. Even though I'm not in dark mode on either device, you can see they are not in dark mode, but I had like a dark map and also all of the overlays right here where it shows like the precipitation and the done button, all of that is lighter now in iOS 15.1. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, there have been a lot of reports of users having storage issues on the initial release of iOS 15. And if we go into our settings right here and then go down to general and then to iPhone storage, this is where some people are seeing a warning that says iPhone storage almost full. 
Even when they you know, have a lot of space left, their storage is not almost full, but it gives them that error message, basically warning them that they're about to run out of space. And then other people have had a bug where the storage amounts just simply do not add up to how much storage is shown. So for me, it shows 34 gigabytes is being used and it looks like mine lines up. I'm not gonna go through and calculate it, but it looks like it lines up. But for some people it shows, you know, this would show like 60 gigabytes and it would clearly be off. So that has been an issue for some people on iOS 15. I'm not sure if iOS 15.1 fixes that just simply because I've not had that issue, but that is a potential bug fix that could be coming here with 15.1. Now, one new bug that I'm facing after updating is inside of the notification center. I noticed that I cannot swipe over on notifications now. So take a look at this. I just simply cannot swipe over on my notifications like I could before. So it doesn't matter where it's at, if it's in a summary or not, I just simply cannot swipe over. It just takes me to the camera right here, which is weird. So that is a bug I'm facing right here on this first beta of 15.1, but I'm assuming that will be fixed in the next release. And then if we take a look at the release notes, they don't really tell us too much, just some known issues with home and one resolved and one known issue with Swift UI. So really not much to look at here with the release notes. But as far as performance goes, everything feels smooth so far. I mean, I did just have this installed for about an hour, so it's really hard to tell right now, but I would expect the 15.1 release to be a little bit smoother than the initial release of iOS 15 just because that's how it is every year. I mean, the initial release is never going to be perfect. There are going to be bugs. There is going to be like stutter and lag throughout the OS, but 15.1 might very well fix some of those issues. Now, if we take a look at the Geekbench scores, I'm going to go ahead and run one real quick right here. Let's run the CPU benchmark and see how it compares to the initial release of iOS 15. So we scored a 1592 on the single core, which is not too bad, but we got a 4090 on the multi-core, which is pretty low. You can see compared to the initial release of iOS 15, we got a 4200 there. So a minor decrease in the single core and a big decrease in the multi-core score right there. So just something to note, this is a first beta, so it's not expected to be the best, but you might see a minor decrease here based on the Geekbench scores. But again, those don't always tell the full story because to me, everything feels just fine so far, except for that issue, like I said, with the notification center. And it's the same deal with the battery life. I would expect very similar results to iOS 15, maybe slightly worse just because it is a first beta, but I would not expect battery life to get any better here with the initial beta of 15.1. Now, when the final version releases, maybe you could see a fix for battery drain and things like that, but it's too early to begin talking about that. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So today is September 21st and we're on the first beta. So obviously that means beta two is going to follow after. And I would expect that to be released two weeks after today. So maybe on October 5th is when we can expect to see iOS 15.1 beta two. Apple usually waits two weeks before releasing the second beta for these point updates. So I would expect it then. Now, in the meantime, we could see a 15.0.1, maybe on the first week of October, since we do have the new iPhones coming out this Friday on the 24th. We may even see 15.0.1 next week on the week of the 27th, just to sort out some bugs and maybe some security issues as well. So do not be surprised if we see a 15.0.1 within the next couple of weeks. And then as for the public release of iOS 15.1, I do expect to have multiple betas. So I would not expect 15.1 to be released to the public until the end of October. So maybe on the week of the 25th, maybe on the 26th or the 27th is when we can expect to see iOS 15.1. And that is going to be a big update because it's going to bring, of course, share play back to everybody. A lot of people updated and were extremely disappointed when they found out that share play was not there, even though it was promised by Apple months ago. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.1 beta one. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 and iPhone 13 coverage coming very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.